Hello everybody, this is a video and I'm apparently holding it in my hands. I don't know why I did this gesture, but I'm here with my wife, Laura. Hi. Who puts up with my ridiculousness to talk about Exit the Game. All of Exit the Game. All of Exit the Game, games. <laughs> so there are 17 Exit the Game games. In English. In English right now at the moment of this video. What's the date? We are at November the 20th of 2020. So there are for sure some coming out after this one. So maybe we'll do another one in 10 years after all the other exits. Oh man, I don't we'll know. Get the, we'll advent, be able to get the advent calendar. Remember calendar. everything to rain mm. by then. It was hard enough trying to recall back yeah. this time yeah. for 17 of them. That's absolutely right. Um, I'm glad you're here joining me. It's been a while since you've been on a video with me. So thank you, lovely. Yeah. Um, all right, so before we get started ranking our exits, Let's talk about how you came up with your ranking. Okay, um, I used a point system between one and five. And um, honestly, to go back and remember all of them, just the, just when we've been playing them for so long and you finally said there were 17 of them, I was like, <laughs> I, can't, I couldn't believe mm -hmm. that we had played that many. Yeah. And so I had to go look around on BGG at just pictures of the components. Um, I didn't want to read other people's experiences because they might not mirror ours. And yeah. usually when you're typing those kinds of things up, you're going to put your feelings into it and that might not match my feelings on it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have no spoilers also, although I've played them all. So literally I just looked at pictures of the components to try to remember what my impressions were of the game. And then I ranked either, I, I even did half points, mm -hmm. uh, between them and, from there, I went and put them in order from 17 to 1. Sounds like a wonderful system. I'm not quite as detailed as you. Um, since board games are about experiences and memories, I went based on my memories of the experiences we had with each one. And just See, my feelings. It's really feelings, hard for me to remember much of them. Uh, I just, I feel like I have these strong emotions attached to each one. So maybe I don't have like super strong feelings about some of them because they may not be as fresh. Mm -hmm. um, but strong enough to where I can rank them. Right. Yeah. Well then, speaking of ranking them, you said the magic word. Let's get to ranking them. Starting with number 17. We're going to do this as a surprise. I'm going to write mine down. She's going to write hers down. And we're going to reveal and see if we have any crossover. I'm ready. I'm ready more than you. <laughs> ready? Three, two, one, Boom. go. The Polar oh. Station. I see. I thought you didn't like Theft on the Mississippi. No, I liked it. Well, see, I'm not fond of Polar Station, but we'll, we'll see. Well, I'm not going to talk about that. But Well, the, I do want to talk about the experience of Polar Station. <laughs> okay. So, because I ranked it number 17. This was our first, we've only done two of these games live stream, just because we enjoy the experience and we want everyone else to enjoy the experience, mm -hmm. but we also want you to watch our videos. So we don't feel like putting out videos that we don't want people to watch, especially because you'll get spoilers from watching the game. So we've only done it twice. And the first one we did was exit the polar station. So you can go look that up. Is that under our Mary Big Board Games? Uh, it's under that playlist, yes. Right. So um, you can see what that was like. And there was one <laughs> particular puzzle that really hung us up. And we've gotten so many comments on that video because that's still a pretty highly watched it is. video. We still get comments that people get hung up on the same puzzle as us because mm -hmm. somebody will play it and then they'll go back and watch our playthrough of it and compare. And I, I still see that we get comments about that. Yeah. But uh, I didn't understand that either. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, there is that. Um, so the difficult thing about ranking is... And explaining your ranking is not giving away stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're gonna be a lot, be very, to we're gonna be very vague, but the the ranking still is, still matters. So mine, theft on the Mississippi. This is one where you're like on this steamboat, and there's been this theft. Really? Yeah. And <laughs> keeping it vague. Yeah. So you want to solve the crime, and figure out who did it, and um, also there, as with the rest of them, there are lots of puzzles to solve, mm -hmm. and. I just feel like that the way that the crime solving worked was kind of fiddly. It was, I just didn't work for me. And then there were two or three puzzles I can distinctly remember thinking, these are, I don't understand these at all. 
And I just don't have a very good memory of this, good experience of this game. Well, I remember Polar Station as not being that fun. Okay. So that's well, number 17. I guess we'll find out where I put Polar Station. All right, let's move on to 16. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Boom. Boom. There it is. 16. I have the Catacombs of Horror. I have the Polar Station. Oh. <laughs> So there's the polar stage for you, one above mine. Just barely missed it. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just go go ahead and echo everything she said. Um, just wasn't the best experience. Just felt like we got stuck a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to clarify: these are all great escape room games. Um, we just have to rank them, and have, mm -hmm. some have to be better than the others. So this was still a good game. Just didn't have a highlight an experience that had highlights in it. Okay. So for me, Catacombs of Horror, this is a very distinct game as far as exits go because this is a two-parter. Mm -hmm. It comes in a larger box, yes. too, than your standard exit game does. And so uh, we knew that there was a particular point where, where it stopped and then it tells you you can either continue or we can save it till later, which I believe we did. We spaced it out over we two did. different days. Um, but I just found that started out great and then after a while the puzzles i thought that it just it was very hard with the components that we were given to solve the puzzles um it, it, it it's you have to be so particular in holding things in the right place in order to be able to find the solution mm -hmm. and if you're just a millimeter off it's not you're not going to get the correct answer yeah. and uh it was very frustrating mm -hmm. i remember being very frustrated mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. doing as we progressed be, as the puzzles kept going. So yeah. not at the beginning, but later on, mm -hmm. I, oh, because I'm trying to keep it vague. Um, I got so incredibly frustrated in this one. The interesting thing is this is one for other people, many people is their favorite or one of their favorites um, from what I've seen. And um, well, we'll get to it. I'll just, I'll talk about it when I get to it. Okay. All right. So that's 16 yes. going on to 15. And three, two, one. Boom. Sunken treasure. No. Yes. You... Yeah. Oh, that makes me sad. I, I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, so like I talked about with how I qualified these uh, on my ranking system of one to five, I gave this one a two because when I was looking at the components and trying to recall our experience with it, I didn't recall very much about it, which means it wasn't that memorable. And what I did recall about it was just kind of, eh, that was cool. That was well, neat. That was eh. really cool. We will find out whenever it gets to my turn to talk about well, it. Well, what about yours, the Pharaoh's Well, tomb. mine is the Pharaoh's Tomb. Um, this is kind of like, I have the memory of it being, me being frustrated a lot. Um, I feel like that there were a couple, this was one of the ones where it had a couple puzzles that just kind of like stop you in your tracks. Um, we talk about how there are different types of escape rooms. They're linear. You go from one puzzle to the next, to the next, to the next. Yeah, like this puzzle will unlock the clue that you need to solve the next right. puzzle, like that kind of thing. And then there are some that have like a little bit of information that you need to determine what goes where, and you can be working on a couple different puzzles at the same time. And this one, I felt like we got stuck a couple times and just because couldn't Because it was forward. linear? I don't remember if it was linear or not. I think it was. Maybe not. I don't know. That doesn't matter. What I do remember is though, is just getting stuck and not being able to move forward anywhere a couple of times. And like, whenever we got the answer to the puzzles, it was like, oh, are you kidding me? A couple of times, but you know. Well, I'll share my thoughts on it when I get to it later. Okay. Let's go on to number 14. All right, number 14. I have mine, do you have yours? I've got mine. Three, two, one. Forgotten Island. What's yours? The Stormy Flight. Stormy Flight is mine. I'm looking at our monitor, <laughs> reading it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you talk about yours. Okay, the Stormy Flight we did. This is the other live stream that we did. Um, and maybe maybe there's a little connection there between <laughs> our exits. <laughs> we put the ones we picked to live stream. And the, uh, our enjoyment of them. Maybe if the pressure wasn't as high, we didn't enjoy them more. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like we had the pressure going. But um, this was definitely a linear one. And... 
I got excited about the theme. Maybe it was just because it was a letdown. I got excited about the idea of the story, the theme. I think because you're such a fan of Lost. Yeah. And I it am. really made you think of yeah. whatever that flight is. Oceanic Flight 815. I knew you'd do that. September, September 22nd. I'm setting you up for that, actually. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember the year. 2005? Four? How dare you? I know. Anyway, um, the story of flight. Uh, just, uh, I think there were a couple of things that I was like, this is kind of a, a meh one for me. Oh, okay. I think. Um, just didn't quite capture what I had hoped that it would have been. Mm -hmm. And see, for me, Forgotten Island, like, well, going backwards, my 15, uh, Sunken Treasure was meh. This one is kind of meh. There were a couple of puzzles in there that I was like, no, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't enough, it was enough to make it above sunken treasure but it wasn't enough to propel it up higher on my list but i mean still these are 17 excellent games we think differently as you'll see more later let's continue okay three two one ta-da the pharaoh's tomb the secret lab yeah you really have to be sure and read yours to them because i don't know that they can read your handwriting oh, the secret lab uh, and I drew, oh, you drew a, a beaker. little beaker. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case you were curious or Cute. you wasn't clear what it was. Okay, so then in my 13 is Pharaoh's Tomb. Um, I liked this one because of the theme. I like Egyptology stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool and fun. Um, I there's just there's a there's a pattern in the production of these exit games and they started out so good, and then it kind of goes a little, hmm. and then a couple, every once in a while, it'll go, ooh, good, and then, eh, okay, good. And um, so this <laughs> falls into one of the downward baseline trends, maybe, because, um, I mean, it was okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's getting major kudos for the theming Okay. for me. Okay. Um, well, mine, the secret lab, was, I believe, in the very first... Um, that release. set of three. Yeah. And I think just having it to compare to the other two, which was the Pharaoh's Tomb and... The Abandoned, abandoned Cabin. cabin um, I had such strong feelings. Well, we'll see. But um, just, it was kind of forgettable for me. Um, just not anything remarkable, which is fine. Among the other two. Yeah, I mean. which is fine because it's it was like one of the first ones. And out of the three, this was probably the one that they would recommend you start with because it was a simpler one um, but just not very memorable okay all right okay we're ready yes five four three two one boom house of riddles the catacombs of horror okay then yeah i liked 12, it a little bit better than you for you yeah i liked it a little bit better huh. um because one of the puzzles that you're talking about that was so frustrating was a really neat idea. Okay. Um, it was really cool. Um, I think that, and there are some components in the game that are really cool. I think that's really neat. That shows actually the way that you think. Mm -hmm. Like you think of, if it's just super cool, go ahead and include it. I'm like, if it's super cool and it works, <laughs> incorporate it. But it doesn't work all the time, so I don't think it should yeah. be incorporated. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, it was, I remember just going through it with you and it was a two-parter. I know we had our frustrated moments. Um, but just the idea of being trapped into the catacombs and seeing creepy things and and uh, that kind of thing was was fun. Mm -hmm. so, I, I drew a skull. <laughs> so that's what you're going to do now. I am. Okay. Well, mine is the House of Riddles, um, and this one really it's just it's ranked a little bit higher because it had some cooler puzzles in it, and um, I think we had. An okay time with this one, a pretty good one with this one, but then there were a couple of puzzles in there that were just, after so many games of Exit, we had some things that we had come to expect. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I knew to expect that one, so I'm not as surprised by it anymore. Yep. That's kind of sad, yeah. but the kind of, other but people... It shows how awesome we are. <laughs> there you go. Let's yeah. move on. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready with my number 11. I've got mine. All right, let's reveal in one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I counted. Throwing 
Don, down last time. Throwing you for a loop there. Okay, well, uh, so mine is theft on the Mississippi. Which we've talked about. Uh, yes. You, I'm surprised it is as high up as so it is. So I, I thought like, we both had a bad experience. I like solving mysteries. I really like that. And so that aspect was so super cool to me of, of figuring out which suspect fit this description. So whether or not we could, you know, quantify their alibi or not, I really mm. enjoyed that aspect of it. <laughs> well, I think this is an, another example of me, based on the premise, really wanting to like it. Yes. When I think I was let down. That's another, um, I had high expectations. Mm -hmm. and, you know. Okay, what about you? Uh, the House of Riddles, which is what you just said. Right. Um, it was, I think it's the... So I'm, I'm sensing a trend here, because mm. we did that with Polar Station. Yeah. And, we, and this one... Yeah. Of just one off from each other. Was there another one? Or has it just been, it doesn't matter. Um, but this is the easiest exit game, I think. Yeah. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a good one. And it's one I'd recommend to, you know, younger people or people um, just getting into it. Because it definitely feels like it's geared towards um, not adults. Um, just the content of the game. But... It's, so it's still good, but with it being as easy as it is, well, it didn't feel as much of a challenge. So, 11. Okay. And that you see my house of riddles. Yes. Okay. <laughs>
You mean as far as translating from German to English? Yeah. That there was a word there that was maybe kind of a shortcoming. Wrong choice. Yeah. Word. Um, so I remember that being something, an issue. Um, but um, there was a neat pay payoff at the end. Um, at the end of the game, you had some stuff that was kind of neat and kind of some clues as to future games. Um, so yeah, it was, it's a good one. I'm uh, just not... Was wasn't one of them about the haunted mansion or the haunted roller coaster? I don't know. Was it? I guess they'll find out. All right, number eight. Here we go. Forbidden Castle. The Sinister Mansion. Oh, we're kind of close there. Yeah. But, I mean, the names are very. Yeah. It's sinister. The forbidden. Adjective. Location. Well, that's how most of them are. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Stormy Flight. Polar Station. Well, that... Uh, Polar Station. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Sinister Mansion is a good one. Um, I believe there are a couple of these that have a through storyline. They kind of connect the things linking each other to it. And I believe this is one of them. Mm -hmm. It's not that you need to recall something from the other room in order to be able to solve a puzzle in this mm -hmm. one because that will be harder as it goes. You're, you may not know in what sequential order they released. So mm -hmm. don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if yeah. you're playing them in whatever order, if you're not going by release order, don't worry about that. Yeah. But there is a neat little thing that connects it. You, you'll be going through and you'll go, oh, we saw something mm -hmm. like this in that room. It's a little bit more than an Easter egg, kind of. Right. That's a good way to put yeah. it. Cool. I like that. Thank you. But yeah, good enough uh, to be almost halfway up the list. Um, I liked the theme, I liked the idea, and, and there's some really good puzzles in this one. Mm -hmm. so. Right, so The Forbidden Castle's my choice, and uh, normally we play these just Spencer and I, but uh, this is one of the few that we've played with another couple. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't think we would have gotten out of here if it hadn't been for a member of the other couple solving one of these puzzles for us. And it drove me nuts that none of the three of us could do anything to solve this. We just, we could not figure it out. We couldn't see the way she did. And um, I don't think that's fair and cool. And so that I, that's why I don't like this as much as Spencer does, obviously. He hasn't written it down yet. Um, and honest, and it's funny, I know Spencer actually liked <laughs> that aspect. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't contribute at all to solving that puzzle. It was all her. And I mean, she did awesome. And I'm so glad that she did it. But then at the same time, I'm like, how flawed, how, what would have happened to us if she hadn't been there? Mm -hmm. I'd like to think that we still would have solved it. Yeah, you can like to think that all day. Uh, mother is unnecessary of all invention. Or necessary necessity is the mother of invention. So yes. it, would have, it would have been necessary for us to invent a way Probably would have just finish. been looking at answer cards. But. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Seven. The Forgotten Island. The Sinister Mansion. That's the one I just did, right? Yeah. So we're one off again on that. That's crazy. How have we not matched so far? I don't know. Mm. I thought I knew you. Yeah. I Apparently we know nothing. <laughs> um, do you have anything else to add about the Sinister Mansion? Um, I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. I just enjoyed some of these puzzles more than you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very possible. Um, apparently, I liked the Forbidden Island quite a bit more than you, you did. You sure did. I remember thinking, because this is, again, this was another earlier of the earlier ones. I remember thinking. This was like in that second release. I think so. I think. I remember thinking, I really enjoyed that. Um, there are some very clever puzzles in this one. Um, I'm thinking of one right now in particular uh, that I... Makes me smile just thinking about it. Probably um, because it was one that only you could solve. Probably. Yeah. But that makes you feel so smart. It does. Um, and I feel like there are a couple of moments where it's like, um, if you needed, if we needed a clue or a hint, it was like, oh, okay, I see how they got there. Where it wasn't frustratingly like, what on earth, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. forget not, forgotten island. I like it. Cool. I did not forget it. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. What are you laughing at? You'll see. Okay. <laughs> and go. Secret Lab! 
Secret Lab. Yes. And mine is the Enchanted Forest. Yes. So you like my I forest? was laughing earlier. No. Yes, I was laughing at that. But then I was laughing earlier when Spencer was talking about the Secret Lab and how this is the simplest one. <laughs> because the reason I raised it so high is because I remember solving some of these all by myself and feeling so proud of myself that I was able to do it. But they're the simplest puzzles. Well, I said that... I We said the House of Riddles was the easiest one. So it's not the simplest. Well, you... Okay. You've said it twice then. Anyway. Okay. I, I felt really smart doing this one because there were several puzzles in here that um, I, was, I was the one who figured it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I complained about that earlier in Forbidden Castle. <laughs> you did. About somebody else, but... And then it's you. And then it was me. Yeah. Okay. I'm a hypocrite. Uh, the Enchanted Forest is one of the newest ones. Yes. And we just played this one, and this one actually is geared towards families with younger kids. Mm -hmm. um, the age on the box says 10. We did it with our seven-year-old, mm -hmm. and she had a great time. Yes. She stayed engaged the whole time. She wasn't able to necessarily contribute to all of the puzzles, mm -hmm. but she did contribute, particularly the last one. Yeah. She's the one who solved it. Yeah. So that we were able to escape. Mm -hmm. She did a great job. She did. I think it was just that as young as she is, her mind's not used to doing this well, she's kind of thing before. she's never done anything like it at all. No, no. And so it was really just kind of an initiation into that and mm -hmm. her first glimpse at that. And so I think we can start looking for some more geared toward children and mm -hmm. I think she's going to start getting the hang of it. Yeah. I mean, I think we could go back and pick up House of Riddles again and mm -hmm. do it with her. I know. And it's been so many years, we're not going to remember yeah. all the answers to that so yeah. I mean I think it, it's doable but I think it's a great first one yeah. for young kids definitely in chain of course the theme is great and it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. yeah all right five left here we go ready and five. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna count it down <laughs> mine is the sunken treasure. And mine is the mysterious museum. Your sunken treasure was way too low. Well, it sank. Oh, no. <laughs> what she's talking about is this game, this one is great. Um, there's a fantastic, really cool puzzle uh, in there that's super memorable. Um, and I just remember thinking, ooh, we're like diving, we're underwater, we're solving puzzles underwater. And there are some cool things there. Um, and then mostly because of that one big puzzle. Because it was really neat. <laughs> okay. But yeah, Sunken Treasure for me, my number five. Okay, and then Mysterious Museum for me because of um, something that happens to you in the museum. The reason that you keep turning the page in the little booklet. Because um, I'm trying to stay vague mm -hmm. for you guys. Um, I really enjoyed that aspect, seeing what's... What's on each page? I, I just don't want to give it away. But the, when you yeah. play this game, that thing that happens to you in the museum, that's what I enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That thing. Okay. Three, two, one, four. Ah, you are freaking me out with that. <laughs> okay. My number four is the Cemetery of the Knigget. Hey, and mine is the Forbidden Castle. Hey. So I'll start with mine. You should have had it up higher like me because it's fun. That last puzzle that, last that puzzle. I, I mean, don't like. I mean, these games can sell themselves based on one puzzle to me. I'm like, okay, you, you're smart. <laughs> um, so I really, I really like that puzzle. The one she said was frustrating because only one person could do it. Um, but this one was also one that has the... I remember even after she finished it, looking at it, I'm like, I still don't understand how you did that. Mm -hmm. This is another one that has that little through line, that little story, a little more than an Easter egg kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. So another reason why I liked it. Okay. Uh, in Cemetery of the Night is one of the newer releases that just came out. And it was so much fun. We did it, just the two of us. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it. I really liked the the storyline going through it, and um, I it was a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah. All right, number three. Ready? Yes. One, two, three. Boom. Cemetery of the Night. 
Hey, one, one off, off again. The Enchanted Forest. Two off on that one. Two. Good one. Um, yeah, I didn't really like engage you in conversation on that last one. I because you're trying to save agree. it all? Yeah. Uh, no, everything you said is a good story playing through. Um, there was one little moment where we were like, well, that's kind of random. Um, but the puzzles <laughs> were good. They fit in the story very well. Yes. Um, and I was, this is getting me excited for more to come because, as you said, the, the kind of go like this as far as our enjoyment of them. And, and these this last is, two that yeah, have come out. Or we're going like this again. An upward trajectory. Yeah. yeah, so I'm really excited about that. But yeah. Cool. And so and so these two are mm. the most recent oh, yeah. ones that just came out. They are. Yeah. And mine is the Enchanted Forest because we got to do it with our daughter. It was one that was, it was accessible to her, not just in the puzzle difficulty, and but also the theme. I mm. liked that the way that they incorporated the theme in this one. Every other game, there tries to be some kind of spooky, threatening element. I feel like that um, it's going to give you the sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. And um, this one, the theme, it doesn't feel as threatening to me. That's a really good point. It's very um, good it point. Doesn't, it's not scary. And even, because there's like background music on the app. Mm -hmm. And even the girls... They were trying to find scary stuff because they knew that we that's what we do with these kinds mm -hmm. of games is that they're a little spooky and that's why we tell them like don't mess with the game we, we don't want you to we don't want them to get freaked out because they get freaked out about the littlest thing they're but kids. they were kind of trying to listen to the soundtrack to like hear something scary like they thought they heard like some like a monster moving mm -hmm. around and we just had to tell them no it's mm -hmm. it's nothing it's just it's an not, enchanted forest it's an enchanted forest and, but none of the creatures that we talked to or anything in the book are anything that's scary or malevolent. And mm -hmm. I, I was thankful for that. And or so, Maleficent. Trademark. <laughs> right. That's my spiel. All right. Okay. So for anybody who's keeping track, there are only two games that we have not mentioned. Mm -hmm. So this is... We'll have to see right here. I mean, this is the last chance for a crossover. I think we do. I think our experiences were, I'd like to think. Like if we don't cross over here, that's it. Yeah. I like to think we, at least on these two, we're on the same page. But I, you see how well I've done before, so far on this list. Exactly. All right. Ready? Yes. And go. Reveal. Oh. No crossover. So... This is my number two, and that's my number one. This is my number two, and that's my number one. Okay, then. So uh, one off again. Here we go again. That's funny. So then let's let's talk about abandoned cabin. Okay. Um, this was the very first one that we ever tried. Mm -hmm. We did not do it just us two. We did it with was it with my with your sisters. Yes. Yeah. And uh, everyone enjoyed it. And as I was so glad that they got so into it because mm -hmm. I don't think they had ever been, neither of them had ever been to an actual physical escape room before. No. And they're not hobby gamers. Mm -mm. And yet they, it was something that they really latched onto and got into it. So that made us super excited yeah. about playing it. Um, I ranked it number two instead of number one, like Dead Man is for me. <laughs> I have to end the sentence somehow. Um, just because there are elements that I enjoy more of that. So I will talk about that in a minute. Can, do you want to talk about why you gave Abandoned Cabin your number one? Um, this is the one that if anyone's like, should we try Exit? Which one should we start with? Unless they're like brand new, I say start with Abandoned Cabin. Um, it's got everything that I like about the Exit series. Clever puzzles, um, stuff that's like thinking outside the box. Um, <laughs> Is that um, a hint? I, I'm not saying anything. Um, <laughs> just the, the, the story about you being in this, this well, abandoned cabin. It's the one that kicks off this little through line that goes through. Of more than an yeah. Easter egg. Um, it was just a very enjoyable experience. And the fact that I played it, our first one, and then 17 later, or 16 later, I still consider it my favorite, really means uh, really shows something. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so now I want to talk about Dead Man okay. and the Orient Express. All right, my number two, your number one. All right, so you give your reasons for why it's your number two. Um, I think it's great. You're solving a mystery in addition to doing these different puzzles. Um, so you have to get the information right, mm -hmm. your deduction of whoever the murderer is. Um, I think it's neat. It's got like 
you get to go to the several different train cars. Yeah, like they're, they're each cabins. have their own little books. Yeah, they only have their little cabins, mm -hmm. um, so you can move around to those. Um, and it just all felt right. It felt right. It, it felt real good. And being able to <laughs> felt real good. Uh, <laughs> being able to not only solve the puzzles, but then for us, we did solve the crime. We were right about mm -hmm. it. Um, it was a good experience. Right, and so that's one of the things that makes this rank number one for me and more and rank higher than theft mm -hmm. is that in this, it, it falls along the lines of, you know, of Poirot and everything, of pinpointing who the murderer is. Mm -hmm. This isn't a theft, there has been a murder. And when we pull into the next station, Police are going to come on board and arrest this person. You're the person trying to figure out who did it. The stakes in this one are a little higher because you don't, I mean, it's all kind of circumstantial evidence. You know, it's not mm -hmm. the kind of thing of like fingerprint tracing mm -hmm. or, or that kind of thing. So you can get it wrong. Mm -hmm. You can not catch the right person and at the next train station, boom, they're yeah. gone. Uh, we were lucky we got the right person. We weren't lucky. We were smart. Well, we were good okay. detectives. You were, I will give you that. Thank yes, you. Yes, you're right. Uh, <laughs> but with theft on the Mississippi, that one, it's either, it's it's the typical escape room. Either you solve the final puzzle and you finish the room or you're stuck in there and you got to keep going until you solve the final puzzle. Mm -hmm. With yeah, this one, true. it's possible to get it wrong. And, and I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, um, both great. I mean, either one, good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, cool. I was about to say I kind of had a little bit of difficulty ranking the one and the two. Yeah, they're I mean they're both so good, but they are. Yeah, so those are seventeen exit games. All again, great. Mm -hmm. Just we had various experiences with them that ele elevated some more than others. Yes. So, like we said, we gave like a shout out to the brands of just how amazing their intellect is in creating these games. But I also want to give a shout out to the translation team mm -hmm. because when the brands make these games, it's in German. And then that translation team is able to make it so that even in English, we're still getting the same thoughts conveyed to us. And some of, sometimes, and a lot of times, these use rhymes. Yeah, And very specific words. And the translation team is able to solve those problems and make it so that there's usually not a hiccup. Mm -hmm. And so major kudos to yeah. them. Final shout out is to Cosmos. Yes. Um, we would not have been able to play all of these had it not been for their support. We didn't buy some of them, but also some of them were review copies. So thank you Cosmos for supporting us. Yes. Um, I guess that's it. Do you have anything else to add? No. This was fun. Yes. Thanks for coming on the video with me. Aw, thanks for having me. All right, well, let's do my signature sign off. Let's do it. Until next time, don't take the board game hobby too seriously. Just lighten up. <laughs>